a season of firsts, here is another. Women's Monobob World Series racing under lights. It's Koenigsegg, Bavaria, a snowy Saturday evening. The lights are on and, well, none of the fans are here. They are at home. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Koenigsegg. Martin Haven and John Morgan getting ready to see the second and deciding heat here in Koenigsegg of this Monobob race. And, John, it is going to be absolutely a tricky one to call. Yeah, there's some well-known names atop the leaderboard. A lot of Irish Taylor, without this mistake here, a lot of might have been the leader. She had the second best start of the first heat. She's always one of the best starters and pretty clean the rest, the rest of the way down the track. She's in third. Second place, Stephanie Schneider. Well, Schneider had it going perfectly the whole way. She was the first athlete down, draw number one. Made a little bit of mistake on the bottom. In fact, at the last split, she lost quite a bit of time in that uphill section. She's in second, but the lady they're chasing is the one who uh, made her debut in Model Bob last week in San Moritz, and she won it. And here today, she had the seventh best start time, but she had the best down time by three tenths. She blew everybody away on the bottom part of the track the last 300 meters. Kaylee Humphreys, the two-time Olympic gold medalist, showing she knows how to drive any of these sleds they put her in. She sure does. Three tenths ahead of a tight battle for the medals. Stephanie Schneider, Lana Myers, Taylor, Martina Fontenev, Kim Uran, and then behind, well, a tie for six, but we have got nine sleds covered by eight hundredths of a second from Kim Kilicki, Najesta Segeva, Melissa Lotholtz, Mishma Neil, Cynthia Appiah, Christine De Brown, and Brianna Walker. It's going to be very intense. So we start with 15 sleds. They go in reverse order of their first heat performance, last to fast. Leader goes last. There she is. And that means that we will see battles all the way up the field. Both heats count. Total time it will decide our winners and our also rounds there. In fact, is Kaylee Humphreys, our World Cup leader. I beg your pardon, our race leader here. Our world leader in the World Series is Nicole Vogt of the USA with two wins and a silver medal in Park City, Utah in three days of monobob action there. You get the same points whether you're racing in a Europa Cup field, a North America's Cup field, or a fully loaded World Cup field like this which seems a little bit of an anomaly. However, 15 sleds on our entry, and Van Nuenhaus will be first off. Andrea Greku has a little advantage over her. Mary Amanka, a fraction over Greku. And then we get into the knife fight. It's a knockdown, drag-out battle from the fifth sled to the ninth sled down. And as we get to the top of the pile, Lana Myers-Taylor battling with Martina Fontenev, Kim Uran, and Stephanie Schneider, Schneider for the medals but Kaylee Humphreys is going to have to give this away for anybody else to take gold. There you go. Tom Delahunty lays the sled on the ice for Belgium's Anne Van Nuenhaus, getting the second heat underway in the Women's Monobob World Series here, Koenigsegg, Bavaria. I'm Martin Haven with me, John Morgan, watching the action. Well, if you do the splits, you subtract the fifth split from the fourth split, Anne is right there with everybody, except her start time puts her behind the eight ball, Martin, if we can say that. But, you know, great lines coming down the track, but uh, the start is where she gets beat up. Well, so many of the drivers in Ooh. the field only drove monobob for the first time a week ago in San Moritz. A number of them drove in Innsbruck just before Christmas. But it's still a very new discipline to everybody. The sled handles very differently from a fully laden two-seat sled. Well, Martin, we uh, described, you know, the two-man Bob, as we say, is a sports car. The four-man Bob's a big sport utility. And Mike Kahn sent us the text uh, saying, we should call these things, oh, she almost tipped over, call these things go-karts. But I think that there's a better term than go-karts, but uh, we'll find one. But they're, they, yeah. they're a little different. You know, we have to get into the Sportsman Series. Uh, what have you got in Formula One? You're a Formula One guy. How far down the... What? What are the cars this, there? These kind of drives, they drive a lot like a rally car, very tail happy. So if you, let's say it, let's say it's, um, yeah, it's dirt oval racing. 
without the big wing on the roof. These things are very, very tail happy. There's no weight over the back end. So once they start to walk, they continue to walk. There's nothing to hold them down. Well, not a lot of fault with the ride. Little problems up top and in the bend away. This is the 4S, a little high there in the third S. Ooh, there's the back end comes up there. But I think I think mm. you're right. There, a lot of sleds have that problem. She's looking at it. Yeah, yeah. Big skid from S3 into S4. She was trying to hold the nose down as you would with a, a fully laden sled. And, and you make that steer and it reacts more instantly, it seems. Well, only 300 is quicker than Anne in the first heat was Romania's Andrea Grecu off the sixth best start. So she started 552, 3100 better than Anne van Nuenhaus. Came down 300 better because she Ooh, had a disaster before she got she to ran the too S's. far. That's even worse. Yeah, she ran too far, stepped too far. Martin, there's the same mistake she made in the first heat. Now she has to steer hard real high in the first test. This is going to cause her problems all the way through these four curves. It's about rhythm through here, but she exits better, way better than she did in the first team. Yeah. She was driving down the bend away, just... looking out of the side window of the sled, not over the nose. Yeah. This is much better than she did in the first run, Martin. Yeah. yeah despite that rub at the start, she's first got run. much more advantage. Ooh, big hit there. She did that in the first heat, too, but she got through 12 better than finish curve 13, 54, 12. Martin, a little quicker oh. track. She's 3,300s better. She drove better, though, Martin. She yeah. shouldn't have been back to <laughs> second to last. She's fewer mistakes, definitely. <laughs> Fewer mistakes. That would have left her in the big tussle in the 70s in the first heat. So she would have, it would have, she'd have made she's 10 sleds cover by 800th of a second. She's about eight inches taller than the Belgian Anne Van Huizenhaus from the, the difference in size. She's the tallest girl in the competition. Tallest lady, excuse me. Yeah. Nice through there. Yeah. Yeah, and here's a little mistake in the uphill, the graveyard. You make a mistake going uphill here. Look at the back end. There's that tail heavy. Not too bad there, Martin, but we'll see. We'll see a lot of people c coming through there with uh, a big sideways skid. Yeah, lots of skids. And none of them deliberate. Next up is our Olympic bobsled champion, Mariami Amanka. Of course, the story goes that Mary Armour had not won a senior level event until the Olympic Games. And then everybody started asking, hey, when are you going to win the World Cup race? Well, the next season, the answer is she, she broke the dam and had a great run of success thereafter. But Monobob, this is a different world. It's very, very different. And you've got to say, she is struggling to adjust. A couple weeks ago, she came out and said she just didn't like him, and she hasn't done well yet. She had it really well. She was in 13th place into the first run, so with the German on a German track, she hasn't adjusted to this little go kart yet. Only 200. Yeah, you sense, and sense she, that she's going to have to spend a lot of time driving these in the off season to get well, her head around them. There's a few other Germans that would take her place that are very, there's a couple of coming up and there's one of them is over at the Junior World Championships. Kim Nolto yep. who just that's won. Why, she's been in these That's why she's yeah. gonna have to get some, some miles in on these things because she can't be being shown the ropes by the, by the kids. Third best speed, she's dropped behind right. Andrea Greco and she is just no, she behind came back. by a tenth. Yeah. A little bit, but still does like the discipline, you know, and hey, this is a full medal sport next year in Beijing. Mm -hmm. Let's listen. She says that. I don't think she'll be very vocal. She's a second off, John. That's oh. not great. Not when you're an Olympic champion. No. no. Wait. 
Yeah. You know, when you're a, when you're a rookie, you don't want to be a second off, but it, this is just it just is not clicking yet. And you don't want you don't want to go over there with four drivers. You want to go over there with the same three female athletes who compete yeah. in the women's bob. They should also compete in the yeah. mono bob. And there's the oh, issue geez. for the coaches already shaping up. You know, we got 12 months to get this together. Yeah. For Australia, yeah. less of an issue because the same woman will drive at both sleds, Brianna Walker. She'll be in tomorrow's women's race, just like all the others in our field. And Brie Walker, with plenty of experience, she is one of the leading lights in Monobob. At least she was in the old sleds. She also won our first World Series race on a World Cup calendar in Innsbruck in December. It's a pretty good start. Yeah, 551 in the first heat. That was the, she had the fourth best start. So good athlete. But Martin, she had one of those trips, you know, the more hits than Elvis in the first run and the straightaway. Let's see if she can clean this up right here. And I think she's returned to, yeah. you know, that's Didn't get not the rhythm what you want to do. She'll be the lead, you know. She'll be the leader, she's, but she's really low in the Chrysler there. Wow, really yeah, low. Good speed and a good exit from the Chrysler. Half a second up on Mariama Yamanka. Her advantage over the first heat was um, nearly three tenths of a second, and she's doubling that. But it's not tidy at the bottom. There is more speed than that in the sled. Well, she's three tenths better. Down. <laughs> yeah. But you sense that could have been at least half a second better because there were some big mistakes down the bend away and below the S's as well, below the uh, labyrinth as well. Doesn't look happy. You know, there's the exit of the S's. This started pretty good, Martin, but then that tap and the rest is friction history. Down here in the doodles, which is usually you're pretty busy, these were good lines. This is where she had the sled going in the ooh, little skid there, skid here on 12. Mm -hmm. She won't be the last, it flops off there. Tail heavy, Martin, I like that expression. Yeah, tail happy, that slides around a lot. Yeah, it's like, it's, well, Katie Humphreys described it last week as like driving a truck on bull tires on ice. So there you go. Christine De Bruyne next up. 10th best start, 11th at the bottom. And she had a bit of a, a nightmare learning curve in Sam Moritz, was not at all pleased. And this is tough for these women, you know, very... they're doing all their learning in public under the glare of TV cameras. Well, Martin, uh, this athlete here was very frustrated in St. Moritz last week. She was just as frustrated at the end of the first team here. She's a top five athlete in the World Cup Tour, as we both know. And uh, fifth and eighth in the last two weeks. World Cup, World Championship medalist last year. So, you know, she might be a little bit like Mariana Yamaika. She hasn't got this little go-kart figured out yet. Well, and the other thing we is, she's, she's got only talent. the third. She's only the third of three Canadian sleds as well. So she needs to put in a good run here. 53-8-0. What is that going to do for her? She's in this tight group with Bree Walker. She was 200s ahead of Brianna Walker. She's opened it up to 700s of a second. But she's in this tight group of uh, seven sleds covered by 800s of a second. So you really do need to bring your A game. Let's see what that does for her. You could, you could see the body language of her getting out of the sled. She's pretty frustrated, and you know this will frustrate anybody. I mean, she can't control the sled here. She did great bottom part of the track. Red numbers here, Martin, and she had good lines, you know, here to give herself a chance. And in the bottom, she made a couple more mistakes in the bottom. You know, a couple more skids down there in curve 12. And right here, there's the uphill section. Watch the skidding to the right of the screen. And then here, look at, watch how late she comes off here. And then she gets into a big skid and that's, it's all uphill on that straightaway too. 
I think the next time she sees a monobob will be just a little too early for Christine De Bruyne. She's not at all happy with her performances so far, but she has the lead with 10 to go and a tightly packed field still to come. It is tough, isn't it? You know, a lot of these teams, I'm talking to Kaylee about this uh, in Samaritz last week, the coaches don't know how the sleds drive. The coaches and the engineers don't know what the sled needs in terms of runners, in terms of steering geometry, in terms of setup, how you set the runners in the sled, whether they're parallel, whether they're towing in, towing out, what you need to control the rear because you haven't got the weight on it. And the drivers don't know either. So it, they're trying to work it out between themselves and they're doing it with a sled that they've never taken apart. The sleds are being delivered. You can see, you know, some of them are still in carbon bare carbon and and you know with a couple of stickers on there they're brand new bits of kit and this is the first fortnight of the learning curve with these new sleds what you knew before from the plank sleds doesn't really relate because it's an entirely different beast it's almost as different as a skeleton sled so it's it's a hugely difficult operation and the previous years the sleds were all identical, all handed out by the IBSF. Now the teams own the sleds. They bring their own runners to the party. So you start to have to know the sled so that you can know what runner you're going to choose to put on it. It's not just a control runner. So it's there's an awful lot to learn in a very short time because Beijing is coming over the horizon at us at quite some rate. Yes. Yes, in the... Uh you know, it's a challenge, but, uh, you know, some people call it a crisis. Well, in crisis, there's an opportunity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, with every challenge comes the opportunity to learn, and they're going to have to learn fast. That's our race leader, Christine DeBrown. And it looks like quite a decent night for sliding here. And she is the next starter here. Five sleds down, ten to go in the... BMW IBSF World Cup here in Königsee, Bavaria. This is our third Monobob World Series race that we've seen on camera. Cynthia Appiah of Canada making her first World Cup appearance. Fastest starter in the first heat. She has one hundredth of a second in hand over teammate Christine de Bruyne, who's our current leader. Great start there again, Martin. Martin, she's from Toronto. She's a track and field athlete, hammer thrower. And her job in the summer is she's a customer service rep for the Toronto Blue Jays. And Cynthia, long time great woman, very successful. She's been driving for the last couple of years. We've not seen a start a World Cup race yet. But whoa! Ooh. Watch out. Yeah, she's not, you know, remember, she's a brake pit. That, you know, went right yep. to the monobobs. I, I would like to know if she's ever driven a two-person bob. Ooh, yeah, she, she did. That's the uphill section, and that's oh, that's in trouble. No. I mean, she's all over the place. Yeah, that was a real <laughs> well, handful. <laughs> Graham, what did you think of that run? Hyperventilating, uh, Graham Richardson, wow. the coach there. Yeah. Well, he's been and that's just Cynthia panic. and Melissa. And, uh, yeah. Panic steering there. That's an experience. You know, sometimes you just got to let it go and bang the wall and let it go straight. This is not too bad. The exit of uh, the S's, runner tips. She's in a multiple skid. You know, the worst, the worst thing you want to do is seeing runners go across the ice like that. Here it's in the uphill section. The other section's going downhill. You're going uphill here in a friction sport and you're gravity sport and you're across the ice like this look she's still trying to steer out of trouble it's yeah sometimes you just and the problem the is go. yeah the problem is there's no weight on the back so you're trying to save it and it's just exaggerating that pendulum effect <laughs> all right she'll do better she next week. to do better all right well that's what you got to do improve every time out next up misha mcneil 13th best start, but tied for eighth place in a three-way tie with Cynthia Appiah and the next sled, which is Canada's Melissa Lotholtz. So 
We've got three here to break up. 71 start, just like her first run. You know, Misha, you know, every once in a while, she takes the less than average start time and uh, just flies on the bottom part of the track. But it's tough to be perfect in the two-person sled. It's even mm -hmm. tougher in these little go-karts. Well, she was a tenth um, behind coming out of the S's, but a good run down the bend away. She's carrying speed into the Chrysler. This could bring her back into the lead. Gonna have to have the perfect line, the best speed over here to overcome this red numbers of 900s. Uphill section, no mistakes allowed. 500, she's coming back, she's got the best speed. She could get it to green numbers. She ducks her head, usually she does. 200. Well, there's good driving. Well, she, there's an example. She was a hun hundred faster than Christine De Brown in the first heat and in the second heat. Total lead over two 1,300-meter runs, 200s of a second. Oh, 30, is 300s right. better in the second run. And like Anne Van Nienhaus, she's not tall and she's not heavy, which means the sled is heavier when she's pushing it on her own at the start. So. That's part of the, the equation there as well. The bigger the athlete, the lighter the sled can be. Look at the runner tips here. She exits as Kreisel, hopefully in a slingshot effect. And Martin, this is where she made her run because she, she was yeah. fast down here on the bottom. Well, she had a pretty decent run in Innsbruck. But next up is Melissa Lotholtz. Now, Melissa will be in the World Cup race tomorrow, the third Canadian sled in the women's race tomorrow afternoon. She'll join Christine DeBrown and Alicia Rissling. Come on, girl, let's go. So, Mel, third best start, and she is the third of this uh, three-way tie for eighth place. Nice low heel return. That's a real classic break woman push style. The best. It's the best 548 start, excuse me. That's exactly what she did in the first run. She had a few issues in the bend away, like most everybody else, except for Kelly Humphreys. And this looks perfect. One hit. Oh. Ooh. See, the, see, the two mans just hit, and they go straight, Martin. Every one of these yeah. little sleds hits, and it gets into a skid. That's the weight issue. Three tenths, tenths lead. Is the That's lead. relative to the start. That's She's still hanging on to most of Lisa that. McNeil was perfect down here. Twenty hundred fourth Two best tenths. speed. Watch out. Got to be enough. Watch out. Got to be enough to lead. It is, but only Barely. just. Wow. Fifty-three Fifteen hundred went away in the last hundred meters. That's that's insane. Thirty-eight. 3,800's better in this run for Melissa. Little issues Knuckles. in the bend, or, bend or, you know, the straightaway. What else do we know? The lighter the sled, the more speed it will lose when it hits the wall at a similar pace. So every time yeah, you so hit here, here's where the problem sled, there's more mass carries you on. Runner tips. So she's sliding to the left to our right. Yeah, she got off there a little late. She, this is where, you know, Martin, she lost a lot of time. There's some spray there. She hit the straight wall there with the back runner. That takes away velocity. Great pictures. Graveyard section, she bangs. Now she comes to the right of the screen and a skip, skid going uphill. Melissa Lot Holtz but she's the lead. through the kit bag looking for a jacket. It's not that warm out. As stripping at the line is Kim Kalicki. Now Kim also in a tie for sixth position. So she matched the time set by Russia's Najesta Sergeva. And the gap over the three sleds behind her, current leader of whom is Melissa Lot Holtz, was five hundredths of a second. Teammates yelling she's her off. Get the beat top. Up at the start. She's going to get beat up at the start. 66 in the first run. Remember, Lowaltz just had a 48, 63. So she's better, but she's still 1500s in the back. And that means no mistakes allowed. You know, Melissa had a pretty decent run, a B minus, I would give her. Mistake in the 
graveyard, and this is a mistake here. Look at the way this is. This is the most ricochet rabbit we've seen so far. Yeah. And this is one of the better drivers. I mean, Kim Kalicki's done well on the World Cup circuit. Right. That'll every race she's been in on the World Cup circuit. Yeah. Five medals. Not in this one. 4,800's back. Nope, not. Nearly six she's going to fall away. back. She could this fall be her back five places. Almost the tail of the field. Fifth place. Well, she rescued it at the line. Look at and you know, Rennie Spies. You can Rennie. see the How frown. Was that wrong? <laughs> yeah. You see the frown on the faces of all these coaches. How on earth? He's, he's looking at that down the bend away going, how do you stop that? How do you stop that? Do you not steer? Yeah, I, I do you agree. really steer hard? I mean, they're trying to learn. Look at her. And, you know, I mean, that's why. Apart from any. Th this is why I like the sport. I like the discipline because nobody's got to figure it out. McKinley Humphrey's got a pretty good clue. But, uh, you know, Kim's got maybe 10 years less driving than Kaylee Humphreys has. But that definitely was how, not how to do it. And can you imagine how mad she is right now sitting in the sled? Yeah. Just, you know, I'm sure there's a few verbal assaults, you know, <laughs> and... Uh, yeah. Well, she didn't alter her steering one iota. She just waited for it to come back. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. And and who knows, maybe that is the only answer, you know. Shakes her head. Not much to say about that one. Well, next up, Najesta Segova, winner in Winterberg at that... the beginning of this season. And then didn't race in Innsbruck. The Russians weren't in Innsbruck, but she was only... They were, actually, but she didn't race. But uh, she was only 13th in San Moritz. Much better performance in the first heat today than she yeah. did last week in Samaritz. She was a little upset with herself when she got out of the sleds. Well, Gave she up won some in time Winterberg at the start. Back in December, there was only an Much eight sled field. Whoa! Oh, there it is, Martin. There it is. Yeah. And you're in the lap of the gold. Little there, aren't you? toy. Yeah. She had a 500s better start, which helped her performance in this heat. But she's so far back related to the mistakes going into the Chrysler. And now she's going to drop four or five spots herself. Is she going to be tied with Kalicki wow. again, but just back for fifth place, not for the lead? No, she's 100th behind Kalicki. She's tied with Cynthia Appia. So Najesta Segev and Kim Kalicki tied to the 100th and they had equally horrible second heats. Watch the frustration here. Yeah. If there was something to kick, it would get kicked right about now, I think. Yeah, lots very... and lots of thinking this to is be why... done. You know, this is what makes the sport very interesting to me. When, you know, you see this much frustration, they'll figure it out, Martin. They will figure yeah. it out. And this track's a great a great challenge to the sleds and the equipment. And St. Moritz, they pretty much went right down the middle of the track last week. Not here. Yeah, not in Climbing Eagles either. The ex yeah, it's, uh, yeah, lots to work out, isn't there? There's going to be a long postseason and a long preseason before we get into World Cup racing next year to get a hang on these monobob sleds. Melissa Lotholtz leads from Misha McNeil and Christine De Bruyne. We have five to go. In our top five, a surprise perhaps for some, Kim Uran of Korea, her first race in World Cup circles in over a year. But she had a really good first start off a very average start. 14th out of the 15 sleds. That's less than average for sure, Martin. But if you do the subtractions of the fifth and fourth time, you know, she was really good on the bottom part of the track. If you do the track, you know, the point A to point B to C to D that they look and the ad, they just subtract the times. Ooh, she was perfect on the exit of the Chrysler down. And Martin, this is better than most right there. What kind of speed she has. Best speed. So, but you know what? That's because this is her first sideways. event. 
This looks like a two-seat sled. This looks like the women's sleds will look like tomorrow. Where are the skids? Why is this sled not skidding? It's something about what runners they have chosen to put her on. It's not that she's got some Ooh, godly genius. Wow. But that is a big run from Kim Uran. 53.87. That is a good run. 600 slower than her first run. Tomorrow, yeah, but, these but same athletes these sleds, with two only people sleds. 600, yeah, only 600 difference between the two heats. I mean, that's astonishing considering the variation that everybody else produces. Have they just gone with the narrowest runners they could fit on a sled? I don't think they've gone that far. They're just using the same runners. She's, you know, she's going to use it in a race tomorrow, I bet. The, uh, but Martin, they're going to be going three seconds faster tomorrow in the two-person sled, but this, they're also going to have another 150, 100, 250 pounds on the sled between the extra yeah. part of the sled. Look at that skid in 12. 15. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and she's still got away with it. Yeah. And she still has the lead with four to go. And do you know what? A medal is absolutely not out of the question. She was only 1,500s out of silver. And you can give away 1,500s in the last 200 meters. Martina Fontenev of Switzerland took a silver medal a week ago in Samaritz. She raced in Winterberg as well. And didn't race in Innsbruck last time. She was the silver medalist in Winterberg behind Najesta Sergeva. So she had two races and two medals already in this new generation of monopole. Big lead, 5.63 in the first run. Start time, 61, 63 here. Martin, she had a, you know, very good drive in the first run. Mm, that's not as good. Big, big pressure in that curve. It's skidding in the Kreisel. But she made her time on the bottom part of the track, Martin, like she did last yeah. week in Samaritz when she medaled. She's and she's going to need to do it now. Isn't she she's got though, a yeah, chance because the Korean back. athlete was She's got a chance with perfect lines in this graveyard section. Oh, Those aren't perfect. Whoa. She's going to no, fall. It's all gone she's, away. She's the gonna... Kreisel killed her. Gone away. Those skids down the bend away. Five and the Kreisel... places. Wow. And again, it's the consistency, wow, it's isn't it? Right. You know, I was about to compliment and her on Kim... how smooth she looked coming out of the S's, and then it all went wrong down the bend away, and it never went right from there on. Okay, no medal here. I well, know, yeah, I know. No, no medal here we for know. Martina. And she fell five places. Melissa well, Loholtz is up now in second with three to go. This wasn't bad, Martin, but again, that little tap right there, that's what really got it. And yeah. that's where it all went away. And then watch the sled then, here. Look, oh. look at the back end. <gasps> Hard steer there, skidded across into the take on to the Kreisel. Yeah. Then you get in here and it's like, uh, can it please stop skidding? Because <laughs> you know, yeah, I have to get out of this curve. Right. Absolutely right. Yeah. Look at you. See All her right. just go with the expression. Mm. For the Three medals. to go. Three to go. Alana Myers Taylor showing her support for Gigi's Playhouse, which is a, a charity set up for parents and kids with Down syndrome. And she lies in third place after the first of our two heats. 3,300s off the lead, 300s off silver. And her lead over current leader, Kim Uran, 1,200s of a second. Now, Alana digs in deep. She wants more speed at the start. 5.45, another start big she... getaway. Same start she had in the first run. Alana had some issues down on the bend away, like everybody else. And it's just, uh, okay. Now, just a little tap and oh. hope it doesn't go big skid. Mm, not bad. Speed, a little late there. Only the fourth best speed with that start. That's surprising. This is for a medal. She's got a half second in the bank. Only. All right, and that was great through the labyrinth. That'll give her the speed. Only sideways she needs here. a clean exit. Oh. 
Has she got the lead at the line? She does by three tenths. She outstarted Kim Yuran by 31 hundreds in this rate and this one heat alone. She comes down 31 hundreds in front. If you would have told me that Kim Yuran would be finished no worse than fourth, I would bet a lot of money against that, Martin. That's the biggest surprise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no but kidding. Alana, last week, fifth. This week, third. Mm -hmm. You know, it gave birth to a baby last February. Here she is back on ice. The competitive spirit, you know, that she has. This was pretty good, Martin, even down here in the graveyard. Yeah. Not, that was pretty good. Now, let's see if the back end comes out on her here like everybody else. No. She glided through. That's one of the best lines in the bottom yeah. part of the track we've seen yet. And it's, hey, it's what they do. It's adapting your line to suit what the sled needs in the conditions. And normally that's because the track has changed. In this, of course, it's because the sled has changed. Stephanie Schneider, second place after the first heat. Three hundredths of a second in hand over Lana Myers. Again, she's rocking the sled to get rid of that inertia. So the sled's moving before the hit. 5.48, another big start. 300s better than her first heat. She was the first athlete down the track, had the best ice to work with. And this multiple World Cup medalist as a brakeman, world champion as a brakeman, world champion as a driver. You know, she uh, medaled last week in Sam Moritz. She's got the red numbers here. Yeah, but Turn what a great green. bend away. Third best speed. This could be close. It was close in the first heat between them. 600s. Ooh. Bump there, Lana was clean down here. Schneider, she, she knows the track well, obviously. Ooh, that's Whoa. not gonna help, that's not gonna help. That's what these sweats oh. do. Oh. No. She was nearly oh, looking at the back door. That's the Whoa. worst line we saw in the bottom part of the track, Martin, and that's in that graveyard uphill section. And yeah. I think that's why I like these, I like the sweats. I, I like, I like okay. you know the challenge is putting on these female athletes. Listen, the way they're coming out here, I don't want to see these things in Whistler anytime soon. Imagine these yeah. in Thunderbird. I mean, wa watch the way she is almost looking out the back door here. Watch these shots this here. Is clean. Uphill. Okay, she's in a bad skid. Now watch, she's got to go in. She, but look at this. Whoa. You can never what? see a sled. That's like a dirt car. That's like a car in a it's dirt like, track. It's unbelievable. It's like the drift championship. It's unbelievable. unbelievable. Yes. Wow. Hello. Hello. Heart That's... in your mouth. I, I think her pulse rate still got a medal. peaked there. Yeah, she, she's in she's the medal. She's got at least a silver medal. A, a bronze medal, excuse me. Alana leads, Stephanie Schneider in second, Kim Yuran in third, Kaylee Humphreys to go. First heat leader, our winner in Sam Moritz. Come on, David, let's go. Well, this is definitely a work in prospect in progress. And she's leading the team on the development of these sleds. And Martin, she had a 559 start, the first run, seventh best start. No big deal, but 561, a little bit slower. She's got three tenths of a lead, but it doesn't mean anything when you saw what Stephanie Snyder just did. 1100's yeah. lead, that's maybe, might go down to 10 or nine because of the start deficiency, but she'll stop the bleeding here pretty quick. There's the nine. Look at that. And I expect this, look at this. Bang, bang, that looks like a two-person slam. Speed, yeah. the best Same. speed in Chrysler. And the top four now, sleds are the ones who have controlled it best, aren't they? And she is Here she still goes. holding yeah. that advantage. Three tenths up, pull away. building She's gonna win. Lead. She's going to win Maybe by four or five please. tenths, Martin. Watch. Look at her. She's going to win by six tenths. She's making her joke yeah. of it. She's two got it two. figured out. 3,100's lead becomes 6,200's lead. Wow. Lana with her little baby Nico in the winner's box. I think everybody's going to try and pick Kaylee's brain. She's got to figure it out. <laughs> yes, she does. 
<laughs> well, she's a joke, not but she just did herself, there. Not concerning herself too much with the start. It's all about the drive in these sleds. The start, you know, she'll work on that. She will get quicker. She will be absolutely at the front of the field. But she knows that it's all about how you get these things down the track. And John, she did make it look like she was in a two-seat sled compared to most of the field. Martin, the only athletes to have 112.6 speed, 112.8 with the Korean. Yeah. You're on Kim. How about that? So the and Korean again, is the best speed. Second best speed was Kaylee. Yeah. Third best speed was Mika McNeil. Wow. Yeah. Martin Kim had very great control as well. Very interesting Love indeed. It. Kaylee Humphreys wins. Silver for Alana Myers Taylor. Bronze for Stephanie Schneider. And Kim Uran for Korea in fourth place. Head of Melissa Lotholtz and Misha McNeil. So Lotholtz came out top of the Canadians. Christina Brown overhauled Cynthia Appiah, who had a bit of a nightmare. There were a few nightmare second runs, weren't there? Bree Walker dropped down the order. Kim Kalicki, so did Najesta Segeva and Cynthia Appiah. And Mariama Yamanka will not want to remember this race too much either, but a huge amount of learning to do because Kaylee Humphrey shows it is entirely possible to make these sleds look like they are completely under your control. And if she can do it, they need to be able to do it as well. 15 sleds went down, Martin. There was only one of them got out of the seat and liked what she did. Everybody else was pretty frustrated. Yeah, she is two for two. <laughs> and still, it's hard physical work. So Kaylee Humphreys is our winner here, and that will move her neatly up the order. She will move up in the world rankings to somewhere hovering around the top 10 as they continue to race in North America and here in Europe in the Monobob World Series. And by the end of the season, we'll know who's got a handle on things and who to watch. And right now, Kaylee Humphreys and Nicole Folk seem to be the ones who have got the best out of these new generation sleds. Well, that's it for Saturday's action. Sunday, we will see the four-man in the morning and the women's race at lunchtime. Till then, from John Morgan, from me, Martin Haven, and the IBSF TV crew, thanks for being with us. Stay safe, enjoy your Saturday, wherever you are, whatever little you can do. We'll see you Sunday, bright and early, for more Koenigsegg action.